nice like that. That would look really okay. nice if we get that. Right. Really it's okay, now, now when you're getting close, there you go. Yeah. Give me the Goyard bag, guys, I'm ready. We are building a backdate Porsche 911. It is starting on a 1979 SC shell. What typically takes two years, we're gonna try to complete in less than 10 months. Jesus Christ. About to do some crazy shit. Working with this guy. I love how he's into my ideas because before I told him about this, I was like, man, he's gonna think I'm stupid. Yeah, but I'm working with the crazy guy. <laughs> I know. Man. And then he opened his eyes and he's like, I love it. And I'm like, really? <laughs> you do? Yeah. That's great. We've been excited about this. No one ever does anything like this, not with the real stuff, you know? Just taking it to the next level, really adding more, you know, signature touches to this car that people are gonna really be like, wow, this is one of a kind. So, yeah, very excited about this. Go big or go home. Go big or go home, yeah. exactly. Oh, you bugging. Today is a really exciting day. It's June 17th. We're about six months in to our Porsche build that we are doing with Simo, owner of SV Auto. We're here with our good friend Roger from Rogelio's Upholstery. Simo, when we started talking about doing the interior, we started thinking about different fabrics, different leathers that are, you know, very Porsche, you know, period correct. I didn't know if we wanted to do a cloth, if we wanted to do a leather. One day I was kind of just sitting at home and I was like, man, it would be wild if we went with something like really luxurious. But how do you get those types of, you know, fabrics? You know, you can't just go in and buy Louis Vuitton leather or Burberry fabric. I got the hair. I've been working with Roger for a long time. He's done our CSF Evo X. He did my own personal RSX. I've always seen his work through other, you know, cars in the industry, especially in the SoCal area. I called Roger, I said, Roger, what if we got a bunch of you know luxury bags, cut the material, and put it in on the seats, and you looked at me like, man, you're wild. He said it can be done. I know you're the right one to do it, but you're from my generation. You see what other people are doing out there with repurposing luxury goods. And once you gave me the confidence and say, hey, I could do it. Is that a problem? No problem. That's when I pitched the idea to Simo. Simo and I come from different generations. We're working very well together. I think this uh, you know, project is super unique because we're blending uh, a really nice mix of old and modern. New materials uh, is really a big ethos of the vehicle in terms of the exterior with you know, Cerakoting, uh, different finishes that we're doing uh, with anodizing and things that you wouldn't normally see on a back day Porsche. It was right after we were filming the engine video. I said, Simo, what if we do a bunch of bags, tear them up, and we use them as the interior? I thought you were gonna look at me like I was crazy. Your eyes lit up and you're like, I love it. Yeah. And that really just made me feel uh, you know, awesome about the feeling that we are on the same page. You are willing to take some risk. And you know, we were gonna do something special. I really wanted to go with something that had a very nice pattern. So it looked kind of correct to the idea of something that would fit within a Porsche. And we decided to go with Goyard. It's big money. Goyard is actually the hardest to get. There's only one store in Southern California. You have to go to Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills. They're super protective about how many you purchase, who's purchasing it. They're very leery about resellers. We went up to Beverly Hills and we were able to secure six Goyard bags, super large bags. Uh, I don't know why anybody would buy it, but they sell them, so we bought them. We actually got it in their burgundy finish, which is actually out of their special collection. Roger, thank you so much for being yeah, with us. Uh, you know, I know Rogelio's is a family business for you guys as well. Yeah. I met your grandfather, I met your father on the way in. You guys have been doing this for 40 years. Yeah. What did you think when I came to you and said, hey, I wanted to do this? Yeah, so when you hit me up, I was like, damn, this guy wants to cut up like $30,000 worth of bags. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I was, I was kind of surprised because I've never done a job like that. I usually uh, do leathers, Alcantara's, you know, different types of vinyls and, and textures, but nothing that costs that much. So I was kind of skeptical. And if someone ever did want to do something like this, they're going to have to put, you know, quite, quite a bit of money on it to, to even get started. I got money. I got money. I got a lot of money. I got money like the Colonel's got chicken. This is a project that Simo and I are working on. We think this is going to be a one of a kind for us that stands against the best builders in the world. The interior has to have that feel to it as well. It had to be over the top, just like the exterior and the hard parts and the performance is going to be. And uh, I think the colors are really going to do well. This is real Goyard from the you know store right away. You can see all these bags, um, brand new, with the tags just popped out, it comes with the green bag, it comes with the dust bag. Just to kind of get close on this, a lot of people may know the brand, but they don't understand what makes Goyard so special. There's only one print. Everything's got the same thing, and each one of these dots is actually laid down by hand. Damn! All the dots are not the same. 
And Simo actually brought out something the other day that it's actually an asymmetrical pattern. Whoever designed this initially, uh, you know, kudos to them. There's a reason why you gotta pay so much for Goyard because it's all hand painted, hand done on canvas. We got six bags here. We think it's gonna be enough for our interior. Some elements on the doors. We're gonna be doing the, uh, obviously the two front seats. We're gonna be doing the rear seats and we're gonna do a couple other touches uh, around the car that uh, I think are really gonna just be very, you know, understated OEM plus kind of the style that you've seen with the CSF cars. They're gonna be going on Sparco top of the line SPX seats. Shout out to my friend Alan at Sparco. He's always come through with getting us the best stuff for all of our cars. These seats are the best seats that you can buy in the aftermarket. I actually found them to be even more comfortable, more luxurious than the Porsche seats that came in my 991 turbos. Well, I'm sold. They're reclinable, uh, they're made in Italy. We don't need the Italian leather because we got the French stuff. So we're gonna be putting our own seats together with the Goyard and a mix of uh, gray Alcantara, leather, uh, nice burgundy stitching, and we're gonna get to it. So uh, let's get these cut up and let's have a good time with it. And now it's all yours. We need some good music behind this stuff. As we were kind of planning for this, obviously we're talking about really expensive material and nothing can go waste. So we are really trying to repurpose every square, you know, millimeter of this bag. Um, he's gonna be, you know, taking off the handles, we'll repurpose those in other aspects of the car, cutting along the seams. Everything has to be correct to how the bag looks to also be able to make that look on the seat. So the pattern's all gonna line up. The way that the pattern goes down is how it has to look everywhere in the car. There was a lot of math involved, and Roger, although he does the upholstery, there's a lot of brain inside there as well. This guy came in, he started measuring stuff. Looked like, uh, what was that, beautiful mind on his, self, on his cell phone with all the measurements. According to my calculations. They probably stitch this up in like two minutes. You already in your mind, you kind of know where you're going to start putting these parts and how you're going to cut it up. Is it going in the back seat? Is it going to go in the front? Yeah. Use it for the doors. Before I cut anything, I'm actually going to cut templates for everything. Okay. So that way we make sure we have enough. If not, I can actually move things around before we actually cut them. There can't be any mistakes. We trust you yeah. with this project. You actually brought in uh, your buddy Francis from Steady Garage. Yeah. He just did an illustration for us of what the actual seat's going to look like. using beast for the um, seat seat release. I have to take that apart and see how it is back there. I like the fact that this is so sturdy and it will look really yeah, nice like that. That would look really okay. nice if we get that as All a right. seat release. So we can use that, okay. that design. He's an engineer and uh, beyond being an incredibly good upholstery guy, uh, it would be difficult to do this without his yeah. input. It's very comfortable doing the bags and many of the other designs because of <laughs> his participation. So we've been doing like the Porsche spenders, scanning them, sending them over to John Civil. He's been designing off the 3D scans. Other people have gotten involved, but I always stick to the upholstery because it's what I know best. Upholstery is, it's, it's artist and it's craft. Your design element can go to the next levels. Roger's able to do things, you know, with technology and CNC machining yeah. that speed up time, really having him on board and being able to just talk to Simo and I about what he knows just from his experience and learning from his family, but also the new school that he's bringing in with the technology. Uh, it's really going to show in the interior and that's why I think we're so comfortable working with Roger and that's why it's always worked. If you guys have seen my CSF Evo X interior on my race car, it is flawless. If you don't know Rogelio's after this, you're definitely going to know who they are. So, uh, you know, thank you to Roger, his, uh, his grandfather and his father for hosting us and uh, we're, uh, we'll let you know what it looks like when we're done. It's been about two weeks since we were here at Rogelio's upholstery. I drew out two different patterns to put in the Goyard inserts, one on the left and on the right. The one on the left is a slightly smaller Goyard uh, rectangles. 
versus the one on the right, which is a little bit larger. We decided to go with the one on the right just because you'd be able to get a little bit more of the pattern and really highlight the Goyard, which is a big deal that we're doing for the interior. It's about templates for all these uh, bottom fiberglass tunnels that we're gonna put in the car. I just wanna make sure before I cut them that it fits on the back, uh, inside the car before I actually start doing any of the templates. After this, Roger, we're all gonna be going over to uh, Simo's shop and you're gonna, I know you're gonna be test fitting some yeah, of these some panels of the back in the car. I signed it all these smooth, and all you can't see it because it's full of tape, but yeah. it took maybe you know, a full day just sanding those and prepping those good. That's the kind of stuff that nobody knows after the fact that it's done, but yeah. you know it and we know it because yeah. it's done right makes all the difference in the world. Test speeding them in the car, making sure everything fits, making sure the back door panels fit before the, I wrap them, because those are already wrapped as well. But we're gonna end up going and putting a Goyard insert on this uh, on this rear package tray. This is what you would be seeing from uh, the rear glass, just to give people a clue of what else is really in the car. It's just kind of lead them into the experience that they're gonna get when viewing the interior of the vehicle. The proportions are very well thought of and I think it's gonna be an excellent uh, you know, final result. It's gonna be a thousand dollar strip right there. Bling, bling. We're gonna take all this stuff right now over to SEMO uh, shop. Uh, we're gonna start putting those into the car. You're gonna see the next thing of Roger's process of him kind of just re-measuring everything just to make sure it's right. And the next time you see all this stuff, it should be all done. So uh, stay tuned. Wiggins clamps, I've never seen this done. Originally, when you told me that you wanna do Wiggins clamps on him, I said, uh, you're out of your mind. This is crazy. And now, I wanna do that on every motor. That was Ryan from Rywire's idea. Yeah. He's always gone over the top with his builds, and this is something him and I were talking about, so I'm glad you were receptive to it. This Kinsler system looks amazing. Shout out to Kinsler Brad, our guy over there. He's really taking care of us and kind of walked us through the entire process of making sure this drive-by wire setup is gonna be exactly what we wanted. So this is the finish that we got on the intakes. They were polished first. That's the only way to get a uniform finish on it because uh -huh. the casting and grinding that we had to do on them. These are modified a lot yeah. from the original casting. And then they were polished and after polishing we put them in a media blast. And now we can Cerakote it to get the matching. Same, thing. Same finish on it. 2004 GT3 Plenum. We're looking at what's available in the aftermarket but also what's available through the GT series of Porsche. This is what we selected for the uh, intake Plenum and you guys did a really good job because if you would have seen the initial uh, casting, you know, it is rough. You know, it is something that's definitely made at, you know, mass production scale, where we obviously wanted to match the rest of this beautiful artisan motor. You know, everything has been hand built, one off, kind of just specific for this car. So we definitely needed to make sure that when you see the intake plenum on top, uh, it's gonna it's gonna look just as good as everything else does. I don't think people may understand how difficult it is to Wiggins clamp and have this done properly on top of the motor. They had to measure each individual runner, cut off the uh, a certain amount that would then be replaced by the Wiggins ferrule, and it's a three-piece system of two ferrules and an inner sleeve. That all clamps together. There's a little bit of uh, um, play adjustment that um, we're able to get from the Wiggins, so we'll be able to handle all the vibration, flex, and everything is done really, really nicely. Tito, Simo, uh, and SV Auto's um, fabricator did, did an amazing job. All this shrouding and the fan shroud, it's all done with that Porsche gray, and it's with the flat coating, so the underside of the car and the inside of the car as well as the trunk and the engine compartment will be all painted with that color. Simo made a mock-up set of hoses, and now I'm going to be giving them over to uh, BMRS, who arguably makes the best hoses in the world, the highest end of motorsports. You'll see that in NASCAR and IndyCar. They actually supply Porsche Motorsports still. We just wanted to make sure it's all tucked and clean and looks great. We'll be giving them those templates and they'll be making us their uh, top of the line BMRS hose um, for the plumbing that we'll be putting back on the vehicle in about two weeks as well. So what you see here is the Rake MDR25 shrink tubing and it's all brand new harness for it. And then Ryan will be making the uh, Motec harness. Yes. Here's the new Motec for it. Motec M130, top of the line, drive-by wire ECU. Uh, we're really excited for Ryan to work his magic. Everybody knows Ryan from Rywire, top of the game when it comes to motorsports and electronics. Uh, one of my best friends, so definitely had to bring him in, introduce him to Simo and have him you know, add his touch to this project. He's really gonna dial it in along with our tuner, Bo Brown. So we really have, you know, 
four or five months to yep. finish the car now. So, you know, it seems like a lot of time, but it really isn't. And, yeah. you know, that six months went by really fast. Yeah, there are no extra days <laughs> at all. There are no extra days, and yeah. I can't believe, you know, we're six months into it. This motor is gonna go on a jig that we made for it. We're gonna put the headers on it. Tito will be fabricating the GT3 muffler onto it. Talking about these headers, these came from high tech. Yep. Correct? That's so, right. Uh, a brand a lot of people may not know unless they're super into uh, you know Porsche 911 performance. Uh, but Simo had told me about this brand. They said it was the one that made the most power, uh, the best sound, and uh, you know just looking at the pieces myself, uh, you know knowing what quality looks like, this is impressive. It's the most beautiful yeah. set of headers I've ever seen. We're actually using a brand new Porsche 991 titanium yep. uh, GT3 exhaust. We're taking something again from a GT3 class, this one being a brand new 991 series uh, exhaust, and it's gonna be great to see how they're able to incorporate that into the vehicle, along with custom fabricated tips is what we're uh, yep. leaning towards, yep. which will then play in really nicely with the custom rear diffuser designed by Johnson Ball. So while we got Ryan from Highwire working on the, uh, you know, the harness for the engine, uh, Roger is now back uh, from a uh, upholstery and what he's doing is he's fitting all of the fiberglass panels back into the car. He just wants to uh, measure it one more time to make sure that all the upholstery lines, everything's going to match up. So when he starts to lay down the material over the fiberglass panels, he knows exactly that it's going to look, you know, lined up and matched the way he wants it. You know, this really kind of, I think, separates the build in terms of all of these new fiberglass panels that we got from Street Fighter LA. So thank you to Lee for helping us out with that. He's got this cut out for the center section. They hand formed this aluminum plate just to really give it a nice contour. We're going to be putting, uh, you know, custom um, CSF uh, 911 decal right into the center section. This is our uh, one of one, uh, you know, handmade roll bar with an optional harness attachment. We're running harnesses and we're at the racetrack and we want to use harnesses. We can put this in. If not, we can take it out. So Tito, uh, the main fabricator here at SV Auto did an amazing job. Clearances to the roof are right on point. Tito, we were just talking about your beautiful roll bar setup that you've done. How many hours do you think you've got into this now? More like days. days. Just for the cage yeah. and the four plates and all that. A good week because we wanted it really, really tight and perfect. Absolutely. Around the car. So these guys have really thought about everything, and he's got a few other custom touches uh, that you're going to see on the final on the final results. I'm Ryan Bossery from Rywire, and today I am working on a project for the CSF 911.